pending mass arrests. You have to understand the scope of what we're talking about here. We're not talking about 10 people, 20 people. We're talking about a systematic, potentially worldwide effort, although most of these conspirators are in the G5 countries, so I've heard. But it's a very widespread effort to effectively give us, as a planet, a massive dose of antibiotics against an infection that has been threatening to almost completely destroy its host. The host being the earth and its people, and the animals and the plants and the trees and everything. So Drake came along on the internet recently. I was sent an email by him announcing that he was going to have some radio shows. But when the email first passed by my desk, I didn't quite catch the impact of what it was saying. Because up until now, the only people who have really been reporting on these pending mass arrests whatsoever have been Benjamin Fulford and myself. And in both cases, we have, together and independently, sets of contacts, some of which are deeply embedded within the Pentagon, who have reported to us that this is very real. In fact, I had heard from an off-the-book source, this is not somebody who's gone public at all, uh, that this had been sparked by 9-11 to a large degree, that many people in the military realized that they were not in the chain of need to know and that this was not Arabs with box cutters who caused these buildings to fall into their own footprint. If that could happen, if kerosene can melt steel, then every kerosene heater ever built is a massive hazard. But yet they're all sitting there just fine. So something is going on here. People know about it. They're scared of it. And in what I call the sheep effect, they feel that if they keep their head down, then the wolf won't know that he's been spotted. But the sheep who's dumb enough to look up and stare the wolf in the eye is going to make him charge, and that's the one who ends up dying. Well, I'm not afraid of death. Neither is Drake. He's here, and he has put a public face behind something that up until now has sounded like two guys stroking their egos, trying to say something that makes everybody feel good but has no teeth behind it. And now here you are, and I want to hear what you have to say. So why don't you tell us a little about yourself and how you got into all this. <laughs> well, uh, what I'd like to do um, in conjunction with that is uh, let people know what we're not. Okay, great. This will give, you, give everybody a, a better uh, idea as to what's going on. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing I should point out is that I called you the other night, and we spoke for four hours and 22 minutes is what the phone said when I hung it up. <laughs> and I called you jointly with one of my very senior top insiders. So you will now be able to vouch that you spoke to him and how amazing that discussion was. And more importantly, I've trusted him, built it up over years, and he vetted you out and actually identified dozens of specific points that you said that are not on public record that you could not have known unless you are the bona fide, authentic, real deal. So I want to make that point first. Cool. <laughs> um, so some disclaimers you said you have to give us here. What are you not? Yeah, you know, um, there's a there's a um, a boatload of people who would like to jump on the bandwagon and get whatever they can get in terms of snatching names um, or name dropping, that sort of thing. They post a website with a certain name and everybody gra gravitates to it because of this or that. Whether it's selling anything or not um, doesn't seem to matter. Basically, <clears throat> and I want to make this absolutely clear, there's a thing called nation states. Now, uh, the project we undertook uh, falls under the definition of what a nation state is in terms of sovereignty. However, there is no such thing as nation states. It does not exist. There is nothing by that name from us. Okay? Okay. Uh, without affiliation, there's even less. So any of the websites out there that say nation states, um, it's probably somebody trying to either sell a widget, uh, or build up their importance, or they got an ego problem, or they want to take issue with what we are about. Now, we do not have a group. There is no group. There are several groups, but no main group. 
there's no leader. And we don't have a database that we keep on anybody. Most uh, of the people are anonymous in that we do not know exactly all of the people involved in this. Now, primarily what this is is a uh, was a project given to us, and I'll explain the parameters of it in a minute. Uh, the process was uh, at first an, a an accident in some ways. Uh, the information from me came over a radio show that I complained about. Somebody took notes and tried it, and it worked. And we'll cover a little of that in just a minute. But um, there, uh, the only basic thing that we've done is a notification process um, that uh, was defined by the basis of lawful notification of a nation state, its existence, and proclamation of that to the world. And the idea behind doing this is ultimately for sovereignty and freedom. Exactly. For now, actual states in the United States as well as for individuals in the United States. Exactly. Okay. Um, the, um, there are several things that go into this. Now, we're not affiliated with the White Knights, gatekeepers. It's just us. Uh, and we, as I said, don't even know everybody involved. Neither do I. It's funny because... Uh, Another contact I have was demanding that they be put in touch with this group. <laughs> and I said, look, I only have two points of contact with this group. Well, okay, three, but nobody wants to say anything. I mean, the amount of information I've gotten has just been in little bitty trickles. But nonetheless, if you add up what the trickles are saying, this is an incredible, incredible story. What's getting ready to happen here? And some of the things you were saying on the other radio show about uh, how much has already been moved into position and how much is ready to go right now, it's astonishing. So I want people to hang in there because right now we're sort of going through some of the bookkeeping that has to be done to build up to this. But once we get to the main thrust of this story, it's absolutely amazing. So please go on. Okay. Now, uh, if somebody was to know about what we're doing, and they would like to listen to the radio programs, which are archived. They need to go to Freedom Reigns. That's F R E D. Excuse me, F R E E D O M, just like freedom. Reigns is R E I G N S dot U S. That website has been put up to alleviate us having to repeat ourselves and the extraordinary glut of uh, filling up the mailbox and this sort of thing, so we have time to do what we're needing to do. Now, there is one stipulation in this, and I want to make this absolutely clear. We do not have anything to do with RAP RUSA, which is Tim Turner's group. Restore want... America program is what you're talking about, right? Uh, yeah. Um, if you go on the freedomreigns.us website, there are exposures for that group. Yeah, I was just going to say the name Tim Turner seems to be popping up in my mind because I think someone wrote an expose on him recently, didn't they? Yes. Um, one of our uh, principals uh, has, a, has uh, an extraordinary library of uh, things that out the group as to what the people in charge were doing or what they intend to do. And um, the ultimate goal was to literally uh, arbitrarily create their own government and put it in place. Tim, well, Tim Turner has declared himself as a, quote, savior, God, or whatever, all funds collected in the country were to go to him personally, among other things, and it gets worse from there. I'm not going to get into the details. Well, it's wouldn't this website. also serve the function of owning the opposition, flushing out the people that really want to do something, and making I'm them think they... I'm pretty sure that that's probably what the idea was. Okay. Um, there are several of these types of operations. Um, I call it the cabal. Um Right, and the only the only reason why I'm confident that you're not well, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why I'm confident that you are not one of those, is I vetted you out with someone who has impeccably proven trust over years of time, and uh, the the degree to which we validated you was vast, and it encompassed over four hours of discussion. So, 
I do not consider that you are in that group. I, I have to keep my thinking cap on as you're talking and remember that one of the epidemics we have on the Internet right now is people who think that they're smart just because they disagree with every single thing they hear and they believe that every single thing they hear must be a lie and must be the opposite of the truth. It's very difficult to counteract that because it's a knee-jerk response that people have had due to the extent to which they've been lied to. And I know that you're not lying because, first of all, your words resonate to me as truth, and second of all, I proved that you're telling the truth in a multiplicity of ways in this conversation that we had. So I please think, go on. I thank you for that. Now, sure. I'm going to tell everybody uh, who listens to this uh, or reads it, and I understand it's going to be transcribed, uh, do your own research and homework, please. Go to Freedom, R F R E E D O M Reigns, R E I G N S dot U S. Put it in your search engine, and the website that contacts uh, run through to the group and things that we get, our radio shows, the sort of thing, is all there. If you need further questions, ask the webmaster, and we will see what we can do about up and supplying an answer to it. Now, basically, this is the prelude to what exactly went on. Uh, you want me to go into that now? Well, actually, let's talk about underwater basket weaving. That might be a little more interesting. <laughs> uh, I have trouble holding my breath that long. <laughs> um, no, I mean, this is what we're here for. I, yeah. I've heard from my own sources, that there is an absolutely vast amount of incriminating evidence that has been collected that will bring down whatever you want to call them, the New World Order, the Illuminati, etc. Uh, you gave me some very specific information about how much of that evidence exists. I don't know whether that was public or not, so I'm not going to say more right now. But you also have given much more specific information publicly than what I've heard privately, and you have fleshed this thing out into a three-dimensional entity that has gone way beyond the point of a speculative what-if and into, okay, this is a vast operation. They've been building up to it for a long time. It's extremely clever, and it's extremely intelligent how it's been put together, and it has been calculated for maximum ex effect and maximum success. And there's a great deal of coordination that will be involved. And I think that probably one of the main things that needs to happen and why they asked you to come forward is we really need to help the public know that this is not another silly New World Order martial law takeover, which is what obviously certain disinformation outlets are going to try to spin this as once it happens. But this is, in fact, the the saving of the planet, and it's the military, as you were saying, not following unlawful orders and actually living up to their oath of enlistment, which says right in the oath that every soldier has to swear to before God that he will defend and protect the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That's the United States Constitution. The Constitution, that's right. Um... You're, you're, you're right um, about this. Um, I learned how to. I, I, became, I came up above the radar by accident, uh, but uh, nobody else was uh, putting out any of the basis of the plans involved, uh, nor the uh, uh, level at which this uh, is actually coming from. Uh, consequently, I felt it my patriotic duty to at least uh, lay out some of the basics. Now. Uh, some detail I cannot go into and won't go into. Uh, if we reach a certain level, I'll say, no, we can't talk about that, and we'll can go on to another subject. But the basis for this is that I learned how to walk point in Vietnam. So shooting at me does not do a lot of good other than to uh, really upset me for the simple fact that in Vietnam, uh, every time we sat down to eat, we'd get shot at. And Scooping your food off of the off the ground ain't no fun, and it's crunchy, among other things. <laughs> really does things to me when somebody shoots at me. So that's not something I recommend. Now, my father, my father voluntarily enlisted in the Army Reserve and served our country in Vietnam, 
and was actually one of the only journalists over there reporting on, among other things, the rock and roll movement in Woodstock. So he was sort of like one of the Good Morning Vietnam people. <laughs> and he did get PTSD, and I had kind of a rough childhood because, in a way, it was like having a drill sergeant for a father. <laughs> and that's sort of the aftermath of uh, how Vietnam has impacted me. I'm, I just turned 39 years old, and I have every degree of respect and admiration for your service, and I thank you for serving this country. You're very welcome. Um, the, ba the basis of this is uh, twofold. Learned how to walk point. Now my uh, goodies are above the uh, radar, so... Um, I got put out in the open for two two reasons. One, I felt it my patriotic duty to try to inform the people as to what is really going on so that they don't have to listen to a bunch of idiots on the Internet uh, spouting off whatever kind of uh, imaginary stuff they come up with. Uh, people do not need to uh, listen to those bad dreams. That's primarily what they are. Most of it is propaganda, and most people don't know what the word propaganda means. In Spanish, they put it on trash cans because that's where it goes. So <laughs> everybody needs to uh, kind of get their get their heads wrapped around this now. I call it fear porn. Yeah, exactly. and I coined that term because I believe that people read this and get addicted to it because it physiologically stimulates you in the same way that sexual material does. It actually makes your heart rate go up, your breathing rate goes up. You get a high off of being terrified. And unfortunately, the powers that were, as I like to call them, have very effectively manipulated that human response so that you have entire outlets of alternative news that, as you just said, are, have built themselves and have profited extensively off of the undeniably pessimistic view that they keep having. And it's almost impossible to listen to them because they just... When folks like you get on there who have a positive message, you just come against this incredible wall of negativity and fear and just absolute denial that anything good be, could be coming out of all this stuff that's going on in the world. And I do believe that good people have seen what's going on, and they're rising up, and they're not going to take it anymore. Well, that uh, that pretty much sums it up. Now, I'm going to reiterate this again. Do your own research and homework. It's not the responsibility of somebody to teach you the basic English language in order to read a website. Most people have the capability. They just refuse to do so and would rather uh, go off in Gaga land in front of the TV or play a video game or they're busy texting their friends and playing with themselves. The ideology is this. We're coming up against the wall. Now, most people, and I don't care who reads this, most people with any kind of common sense at all knows that there are some real serious things going on in the economy. The lack of jobs, the amount of foreclosures, the separation of families because of economic problems. Okay, These are some of the basis of the fear that uh, these people who originated uh, live on. Now, the I want to lay the basic of how I found this, and it was an accident, quite honestly. Okay. I've been studying and been involved in freedom movements and all that stuff for years. I've tried in every way, shape, or form to get somebody to get up off the couch, put the beer down, get up off the couch, and do a little something. Go talk to the neighbor, anything. And Yeah, but what I, if it's I, really good beer? Well, yeah, but the problem is you sit on the couch and, and all you do is you consume the beer and you yak about stuff that doesn't necessarily mean anything. You probably would have a good conversation, but most people are talking, <laughs> ooh, look at that guy shoot that ball at the hoop or whatever. And I'm going to tell you, that's superficial. That's one Absolutely. of the distractions, just like texting, just like a lot of phone conversation. Uh, and the other, the things that do not stay on target now. Within all this, I've also studied a lot of what's called freedom uh, efforts. This includes freedom philosophers and their type. This man got on a radio show and was spouting off all kind of halfway measures <clears throat> that would primarily uh, and basically 
put get somebody put in jail if they did them. Well, because of my you're study, saying people grabbing their guns and just oh now is it you got to go out there and start shooting. No, there was, no, this was, uh, this was even, uh, more basic than that. This oh. was like, uh, argue, being able to argue a traffic ticket out of court. Oh, right, right. Real simple stuff. Well, the only problem is that you can get up to six months for playing games with the judge if you do not know how to do this. And this guy was leaving out critical information that would guarantee almost that you got the six months because you were giving the finger to the, to the judge. You don't, there's some things you do not do. Yeah. Um, so the guy, the guy basically had upset me. Now, the basis that goes well, you don't want to get a Vietnam vet grumpy. That can be a big problem. Well, yeah, but the the, the deal was this. Okay, I needed to know, and everybody had told me you can't do this and you can't do that. Okay, the and then you have uh, things like the Texas Freedom School <coughs> or Freedom School of Texas, I forget which it is, um, that does have some good information, but it is. Uh, kind of fragmented, okay. and some of it is not complete, even though people would like you to think they are. Uh, but for 9.95, you can get the book that explains it all just right. Well, I'm not willing to pay for freedom. That's not what it says anywhere about the freedom at all, as far as I can find it. So, I decided to do my own research and my own homework, and. I had looked at this stuff. I tried to get people up off the couch, and that didn't work. So I didn't have much to do except do the research. I started looking at the basis of law, where it comes from. I'm talking about way back in the in the woods of history. Uh, some of the places I went required me to uh, have anything that I was intending to copy or borrow a copy of electronically approved before they would release it. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of this stuff is not for consumption by the general public, and they make sure of that. Well, after two and a half years, I figured out pretty much basically what everything said, uh, how it was started. Can, can an or I'm sorry, can an ordinary civilian gain access to these documents, or was this because you had some sort of classified access? No, anybody that... Uh, 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 it depends on whether or not you're as uh, nasty as a, as a junkyard dog and tenacious as a bulldog <laughs> and refuse to take no for an answer and you bother somebody until they decide to allow you to do something simply because they don't want to fool with you anymore. I gotcha. That basically does research, and it covers all of it. Those people who won't listen eventually do when you get a hold of them every day. Uh, right. When you send them 50 emails a day, one every minute or something, it bugs them enough. It's like mom. When you used to only get something from mom, if you bug her enough, she'll say, come on, and do it, leave me alone. And that works. Okay. So, uh, the song, I believe, was, uh, you get your way by insisting. Okay. <laughs> I insisted. So I got the information. I studied this over about two and a half years. And it, believe me, it is intricate. It is, uh, extraordinary in terms of what it told me was a simplistic, basic way to step outside of the normal controls of what people consider as laws. Uh, you have limitations, supposedly, uh, between a citizen of one country and a citizen of another. Those two legally are supposedly separated. That's not quite true. Little things of that nature uh, were what I was after to learn. So. I had studied this stuff for about two and a half years, and I finally took a break from it because my head was beginning to hurt. And I decided to, you know, listen to a little radio and play a little card, listen to a little internet radio, and play a little cards on the on the machine. And lo and behold, here comes this friggin' idiot. He's one of these uh, um, freedom philosophers. And this is somebody that thinks they know what they're doing when they are missing several critical points that will get your butt put in jail. But they want you to try it, you know. Oh, I've done this. Yeah, right. This is the guy that would teach you how to beat a traffic ticket, but you could go to jail for six months? Yeah, that right. sort of thing. Real simple. Okay. And it, if you go about it correctly, it works fine. Okay? But if you don't, you end up uh, actually opposing the judge. Right. And you that's, that's a big no-no. What you do is you allow the law to oppose the judge. Then the judge has to rule in a succinct manner, plus you're not standing in a landmine field. That is not a nice place to stand, believe me. I've been in one. So, 
this dink gets on there and decides to mouth off a bunch of stuff, and all he did was it almost instantly make me mad. So I snatched the phone, and I called in, and I said, hey. And he said, hi. And I said, uh, you might be, according to what you just put out, because most of that belongs in the toilet because you're going to get people in trouble. What do you mean? I said, your information is not total. It's not complete. And you're going to get people in trouble by espousing this, by saying that, you know, if you do this, you can get away. You can tell the judge what to do. Well, no, that ain't part of this. And you know it. <laughs> if you don't, uh, I'm giving you a lot more credit uh, than you deserve. So why don't you shut up and listen? Well, about this time, the... Uh, host of the show comes on and says, hey, come on now, you're going to have to watch it. And I said, hey, look, did you realize that you can be held liable if somebody gets in trouble for what this guy is saying on your show? Mm -hmm. Really? I said, yeah. Now, you want me to clear this mess up? Yes. So <laughs> the, then the guy comes back with this sovereignty routine, and I got upset for the second time and told him to shut up and listen, and maybe he would learn something that he might want to learn how to read at the same time. What I basically did was I laid out the primary basis for what is required in order to declare any area. And I, you, if you've got an area somewhere in the middle of Timbuktu land, uh, but it's yours, and it's registered in terms of the boundaries, basically, uh, or you have at least real definitive markings as to, so you can tell where it is and what it is and how big it is, you can declare that area sovereign. And by doing so, you actually create your own nation state. Um, well, if I declared my toilet a sovereign zone, then I could drop waste into it and be pretty much like the government. Well, except that you're, are you, you, uh, as long as it stays on your uh, within your area, yes. Now, by that I mean you should declare the whole yard and use a finger system if you're going to do something of that nature, <laughs> simply so that you're protected legally. Right on. But I'm saying there's little bits of information, and it can get squirrely, and it's a lot of fun to deal with. But so I laid this process out. Basically, what we did, and the way the process worked, um, happened as I said by accident. While I'm telling this guy how this works, somebody in the great state of Pennsylvania took notes. Oh wow! And I didn't have any idea anybody would even be listening, other than to shut this turkey up that didn't know what he was talking about. Right. So obviously a state itself could be a sovereign zone or declared as such, and those who govern the state could get wind of what you've figured out from your extensive research and implement that research. Yes. Wow. That's so, awesome. so basically that's what's hap what happened in Pennsylvania. The person that took the notes was fairly knowledgeable in the real sovereign legalities and lawfulness and took that knowledge in, com in combination with what I had put together, got with some other people, and they said, well, yeah, let's see what happens. And so they put together a process of notification, and they sent it off to the International Court of The Hague. Oh, my God. And this is the civilian division, as I understand it, or civil division. And uh, they, of course, sent a, uh, uh, a reply back when they received it that they had received that package. The uh, rest of it was a receipt of the uh, intent of the package. They had made a copy of what they had sent, certified copy of the original, that sort of thing. Now, their package then, they're sitting on a package there. The Higgs got one in their records. Right. The so now you have a complete paper trail. Exactly. Now the the, the crux of this and this, this is, might be sort of like a subpoena, where the simple fact that the Hague accepted the paperwork, by definition, locks them into some sort of binding arrangement. No. no. Oh, okay. No. This is exactly and only a notification process. I want to make that perfect clear. Okay. Clear. Okay. What happens through receipt of the paperwork is that it goes into the Hague record. And in that manner, the notification then is a uh, publication, like you'd use in a newspaper to advertise, uh, I'm not responsible for my debts any further. Well, okay. this thing says, we are now a sovereign nation state. Wow, and it's, gotcha. it's very similar to that, only this is an international newspaper. 
uh, in effect. We have basically, by sending one pack, one little pack like that, created a sovereign, independent nation state. Wow. Okay, so as soon as they got receipt that this thing had been delivered, they got a call from uh, a higher up in the Pentagon. Mm. And that person says, uh, I understand you guys have been uh, doing some uh, notification internationally. Yes. Uh, I understand that uh, you seem to find this uh, process as being rather simple. Yes. The next thing was, do you think you can replicate or reproduce that sucker? And the person went, I don't know. Mm. And what you got right then was, I have no idea, quite simply. Uh, we can see what's available. We can try and find out. The guy, the person at the Pentagon, and I'm not going to say that it's a guy because I'm not going to put gender on it, simply that, uh, you know, it could be a female. <laughs> um, the uh, man, the, 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 the people at the Pentagon said, go for it, let's see what happens. They said, okay, we'll give it a shot. Now, these people are involved in freedom just like I was. They wanted to be able to do something that was uh, real, uh, proactive, didn't get anybody in trouble, and yet was something that could be also used in other ways. Okay, they didn't know at the time what the what that little simplistic package for that one state did, and didn't find out until late after they started researching it. The, What's the time window we're talking about right now? In terms of the when this all happened. Uh, this happened uh, started in about October of uh, last year. Okay. Okay. The um, which is not an exact date. Um, as of um, November, we decided that we were going to uh, move on this. I got involved because I knew one of the people that had been uh, involved with these people before anyway, and was requested. You know, hey, would you like to be involved in this? And I said. Sounds good to me. It's better than anything else I've seen. And then when they hit me with the idea of what it contained, I said, no, wait a minute. I was on a radio show, and I explained to them what happened, and they said, really? Okay, so here you go. You got somebody getting upset because some idiot gets on a radio show. He tells them what they can do with themselves and how to do it, <laughs> for real, instead of playing games with things. Somebody takes notes. They do it. And all of a sudden, officials from the government in the military are interested. Can you do it again? And along with that, there's uh, a combination of uh, other people involved with uh, their own shows of different, at different uh, times during the week. And these people, uh, I met those people and got involved sort of indirectly with them. Uh, the whole thing... Um, right, I was going to say, it would seem that each state is going to have squirrely uh, barriers to go through different from Pennsylvania in order to get this all off the ground? Well, it depends on whether or not you're part of the original 13 colonies oh. and or whether or not your constitution is de jure, which is lawful by common law, or de facto, which is the corporate government. There's a difference. Okay, gotcha. I hate those keywords simply because people, when people hear it, they, they turn the friggin' TV off. They don't want to hear that. Well, I'm sorry, but you do need to pay attention to the difference. Right. Um, and anyway, so we start booking with this. Okay, we'll take the project and we'll run with it. Um, we uh, were able to uh, receive notice on about the end of February of this year that the package, the whole package, of a majority of the states had been received by the Hague. Oh, In other wow. words, each little nation state package went into a big box, and the big box was delivered to the Hague, and we got notification of the entire package. Now, Let me ask you this. Yes. If the military in its oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against domestic enemies, gets word of a civilian-based initiative which demonstrates that the states wish to have their sovereignty returned to them, doesn't that legally give them 
the right to move forward on this and enforce the will of the majority of the states? Well, uh, that's part of the process I'm coming to. Okay, great. This is not just a simplistic process of sending a uh, newspaper clipping over uh, overseas. Oh, I get that. Receipt that it was it got to where it was going. So, the basic uh, premise of the of a nation state is this: what most people used uh, was either their own constitution or they wrote one. It had to agree with the 1787. United States Constitution to include the 13th, and I mean the original 13th Amendment, where certain people are not allowed to hold foreign offices uh, here in the states. Uh, the Bill of Rights, the Articles of Confederation, and that real cool document called the Decl Declaration of Independence. Mm. By declaring our sovereignty and our um, Disengagement, or our remove, or our effort to remove ourselves, ourselves, ourselves being individual states, from the corporate United States government. What this did was this rebirthed uh, the Declaration of Independence, mm -hmm. which, which states on page two that when the government gets uh, out of whack, you got the right to uh, take care of the problem. Absolutely. Now. Here's the other part of this. The manner and format of using those documents, the original founding documents, uh, in conjunction with a meeting by a representative residents of a state gives those people the right to make the declaration. Hmm. This then gives legal authority by the civilian authority to the military to take actions as necessary to back up the civilian action. That's what I thought. Okay, perfect. It's, it's, it's kind of convoluted, and I know it's not real simple, but simply, we sent off notification. The military gave us gold star. They just loved it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, I'm assuming that, that uh, just so people get clear on this, you're not talking about just a group of ordinary folks who are, like, surfing the net and listening to truth radio. These are actually people who have some degree of influence in these states that you were networking with? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, some of them are um, not very well educated. Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to make this perfectly clear. You don't need influence in order to take certain actions. I see. So the simple it's fact that we are all American citizens, who, everyone whom you're speaking about, myself included, any citizen has the right to do this. Yes, basically. Okay, perfect. Now, the the premise is this: in terms of declaring your state as free of the uh, United States government, uh, and I'm talking about the corporate government and all of its uh, affiliates. What happens is that each uh, state becomes, according to the notification process its own sovereign nation. Mm. So this is where the nation states I, uh, handle comes from. I see. It's just a plural, plurality of what individual states did. You have to have a certain number of people who reside in each state in order to accomplish the process. It's not difficult. We do have backup and assistance for that if somebody has problems. So in our effort, we got not only a majority of the states, uh, enough of the majority of the states to have a cushion in case there was some problem with uh, some of the paperwork, along with a fair, fair group of uh, Indian nations who also submitted paperwork in such a fashion that the uh, basis is this. The United States has been set free from the corporate government, literally, on a lawful basis as recognized internationally. Well, I just, I can hear the howling laughter of skeptics who are already stroking their egos and saying, oh, sure, you know, he can say whatever he wants, but if it ever even made it up to the Supreme Court, they would just knock it down just like they appointed Bush in the whole election debacle between Bush and Gore. Uh, not exactly. Okay. The... Um, as I stated, I went back to the origins of law. 
and the origins of law come from the origins of law uh, as written on cuneiform tablets by the ancient Sumerians. Mm. The tablet that I was privileged to uh, get a copy of uh, comes from somewhere in the neighborhood of 11,000 B.C. Wow. Okay, from that tablet, uh, you got uh, ecclesiastic law. From ecclesiastic law, you got canon law. From the combination of ecclesiastic and canon law, you have all of your statutes and regulations that are considered law under common law. And now, this underlies... Law was developed basically in England so that the uh, poor serf, and this is the hired hand that works the land and tries to feed his family and make money for the boss, right. uh, would have some form of uh, protection in case the uh, uh, some, some dude they were working for decided to go crazy and kick him off the land, he could object. That's where common law comes in. The basis and premise of common law is simple. It contains two basic things. One is no injured party and no property damage, and it's property of any kind, uh, no crime. Just that simple. Hmm. This is the basis for much of the legal documentation that we used. It's also some of the basis for which we used the process. Now, the neat thing about this is that the manner of the process steps outside of both uh, ecclesiastic-based law and canon law, any form of statute, be that uh, local, state, national, or international. And it protects itself because it does not state anything that uh, other than the simple notification process. Hmm. So it stays within the system, but also is set in such a fashion that it's outside of any challenge. This was the idea that I was trying to find out about. Well, uh, these occult governments obviously don't want people knowing about this, and that appears to be why you had so much trouble getting those documents. That's pretty much uh, part of it. Now, the rest of it is that they, they found out about the process we were using and um, interfered with that as much as possible. Hmm. Uh, the um, certain uh, notary seals were challenged. Uh, certain secretaries of secretary of state offices refused apostilling documentation, uh, and a whole bunch of things. However, in spite of all the fun and games, we did get it done. It has been delivered. The copy, and I'm talking about the um, uh, real copy. This is not something you run off a copy machine, but something that is uh, uh, traditionally accepted as a de jure copy of the legal documents was submitted to the uh, correct people in the military who were just delighted to find this. Oh. Now, I'm going to go back to something else. Um, back in the day, I was involved with... Uh, nuclear defense of the country. I had some rather high security clearances, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, due to that fact, I was allowed at a later date, now this was after the security clearances and whatnot, but I had proved that I was trustworthy because there was nothing that I let out that was classified. There was nothing that was of a sensitive nature that I would divulge, even though I knew them. And I talked to a couple of people about this. Eventually, I was given a, um, this, this certain person wanted to know about me, and I, so I got interviewed a couple of times by some uh, colonels and whatnot. And uh, finally, the guy said, one of them showed up in the staff car and said, um, somebody wants to see you, uh, can you come with me? And I said, well, I ain't going to be uh, you know, putting the trunk in mine. He laughed. And <laughs> we took a ride over to this uh, uh, certain level uh, officer's house. What time window are we in right now? Um, 79. Okay, so 79 is when this event that you're speaking of happened. Basically, okay, in that area. I'm not going to give exact dates because I don't fine. want to out people. I just wanted the window. And, he, if the, and let me express this real clearly. If somebody finds out who these people are, they're dead. Oh, I know that. So are their families. 
they get to stand there and watch the watch their families be tortured to death. And I'm not going to put anybody through that by outing them. So I'm going to say arbitrarily 79, give or take. Okay, great. In that process, uh, he invited this 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 officer invited me into the into his home, and I asked him what I was doing there because I had no idea. Now this is after I'm out of the military, and the officer said, "I got something I need you to read," and I said, "Why me?" He said, "Because I feel I can trust you and I want your opinion." He put a stack of papers <laughs> that's about five inches thick uh, in a binder on the table. Five I said, inches thick. Yeah, I don't know how many pages. I didn't bother. I didn't even get to read it all. I spent about four hours reading, and I went through about, uh, give or take, three quarters of it. Okay. Um, I didn't read the whole thing. I got tired of reading, and it was like uh, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Hmm. And I wanted, I wanted, I had to have more than just the coffee he was offering and um, preferably some kind of a soft place to lay, lay down on. So I told him, I said, well, what is it? What kind of opinion do you want? He said, what do you think of it? I said, well, it says the plan. I said, where'd this come from? He wouldn't really answer. He said it had been in the works for quite a while. I said, give me a date. And he did. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I said, so in other words, certain people took issue with what was going on at the time, figured that the ship of state was going to head in the wrong direction, and decided to start putting this plan together so that you guys would have some form of guidance in terms of what the uh, general outcomes would be. He said, exactly. I said, I like what I read. You might have told this story a lot. You didn't say anything about what the document says. I'm assuming... This is something about rescuing America from these Illuminati people? Well, uh, primarily it was generally at the, at the beginning the ship of state was uh, screwing up badly. Okay. Uh, and to keep it from sinking, uh, they actually implemented a general plan real quick. That was probably the first inch or so of the documentation in such a manner that the people in the military could cause influence to happen to uh, people outside the military who had the capability of changing some simple things. Well, it must have been frustrating to see Watergate come and go, but then basically after a little slap on the wrist, it's all business as usual. Well, uh, you have to realize what was really going on. Tricky Dick was trying to become a dictator. Sure. Could not pull the power correctly, and uh, so... That's what happened, basically, yeah. Somebody got a little slap on the wrist and nothing really came out of it. Now, sure. they did not want to out uh, the fact that they had been involved. This is the other reason that you saw only a slap on the wrist and you saw nobody in uh, high office uh, involved in it much, one way or the other. There was a couple of people that were using the scapegoats, but other than that, nobody of significance. That's exactly part of the plan. Right. Okay, however, they could put these people in a real um, uh, sticky situation with a lot of pressure if at any time they decided they didn't want to comply with the next portion of the plan, which starts after about an inch of this. So you go, you're going through these things one at a time. And as this is going, you're also uh, increasing the scope of the plan. Now, the plan basically started with the idea of a military coup. I'm not going to lie to you. They were that fed up at that point, and uh, they felt endangered enough at that point that they were they actually considered it, and each and every last person involved uh, signed a pseudonym name. It's a code name. Each one of them's got one, uh, that they disagreed with the idea. That is not the way to go because it disagrees with the basis or premise of uh, posse comitatus, that the military does not have authority over the, over the civilian population and are not to engage them. So there was enough old timers that disagreed that said, convinced the, everybody that was not cool, so they decided no. And, um, so over the years, this plan built up. And it got more uh, convoluted. It got more complicated. It got. Uh, and this is all in the five page in the five inch document you saw in seventy nine. Yeah. Okay. And uh, in seventy nine, they were, they didn't really know which way things were going to go because if you remember from about uh, seventy uh, five on, after the fall of uh, uh, um, after the fall of Vietnam, uh, there was kind of a dead space. Nobody did any real serious actions of any kind 
anywhere, not in politics, militarily, or anything. During that particular time is where the rest of the document came about. These people were working 24-7 or something in order to make sure that uh, uh, the plan encompassed everything they could think of that could possibly come up. Okay, it's been added to, um, uh, I guarantee you that, uh, but the dead zone lasted until about 85, 86 uh, when, we, when things started happening again. Uh, people were taking definitive action. You had a lot of combinational uh, political and military and financial things going on at that time. Well, people uh, must have realized, among other things, that the escalating war rhetoric between the U.S. and the Soviet Union could annihilate the planet, and you're not going to stand by and watch the planet be killed and not attempt to do something to stop it if it's within your means to do so. Exactly. Um, the threat of total annihilation uh, was one that was unacceptable for, to any of the military powers, no matter what the politicians told them. Right. If the commander-in-chief at that, at those, during those times had stated quite clearly, we're going to start World War III, shoot your nukes, the military would have told them to, to go take a flying leap at a rolling donut. No, we ain't doing that uh, for that reason. Um, to go along with this, okay, you get these periods of buildups. Now, I saw that document uh, way back when. I thought that it probably was a dead duck. Uh, I can tell you right now, it's not only not a dead duck, but it's something that they've been following rather religiously. The thing lays out certain premise, certain areas of concern. Some of those things have changed, so this is why I say that, that the document itself has been added to and modified. But the basic premise of it is simply this. They also, just like me, were extraordinarily frustrated by freakazoids such as the Harry Christmas or whomever was dancing uh, uh, in California at the time, uh, they didn't want those people running the country. They didn't think they could really do that great of a job. I don't understand how Hare Krishnas could run the country. Exactly. That's what they thought, too, and that's how come they're not now. Are they saying that these people were socially active and wanted to take over the government or something? Well, they would have liked to have found somebody that would stand up as a group uh, and actually do something in terms of freedom. And they've been uh, trying ever since the Harry Krishnas and, and whomever, war protesters, you name it. Nobody as a group, group, collectively, nationwide, would stand up and do anything. Same problem I've had, same problem everybody that I know has dealt in the freedom areas has had. Try and get some, try and pry somebody off the couch. It ain't easy. Right. So they're kind of bumping along going, boy, I hope this, you know, uh, I hope, this, I hope the end of the world don't come. I mean, you know, what are we going to do? We don't have any civilian authority to do anything. Well, but. and the, the amount of secrecy that would have to be observed in order to preserve this plan is vast. I mean, yes. one one weak link in the chain and the whole damn load falls and breaks apart. Well, they weren't so concerned with that, but the, they were concerned with the fact that there were certain code names in it that would uh, uh, out people that were seriously interested in implementing the plan. Right. The plan was simple. The military was willing to back, with civilian authority, a resurrection of what we started out with originally in terms of government. The idea that a politician has control over a battlefield is totally averse to the idea of even being on a battlefield. That's now, true. my recommendation to them was to... Uh, quietly sneak up, would take, take some Navy SEALs or somebody that's really good, and pick one of them politicians that's got a big mouth and snatch that dough, put him on the battlefield, not necessarily in danger, but get him close enough so that it, you know, it becomes a personal deal. And then, I'll stand with him again, put him back, and I'll guarantee you there'll be a whole bunch of attitude changes. Well, they wouldn't do it. That was my suggestion a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we're bumping along with this. I've tried everything I could. I've had a combination of uh, contacts and whatnot. I've uh, had a combination of uh, political dealings uh, in okay, conjunction I'm, with a, a whole lot of people. I'm sorry. Let me just let me just 
take one moment here to try to track this in terms of timeline. You, <laughs> you were you were presented. You can't get an exact timeline because that will expose people. I understand, but I just want to give very vague overview. So, so you encountered this five-inch monster document seventy-nine. Basically, and in that you area. Mentioned, you mentioned that you still had contact with this insider network circa 86. Yeah. So these people stayed in some degree of contact with you and continued to spitball about what group you could actually contact that would be able to back you on this, and you kept coming up short because none of these groups were sufficient in terms of the motive and the intent to actually carry through with this plan. Well, not only that, but um, you couldn't get, uh, there was no national grouping of any kind. And you cannot take a group from one state and uh, infuse it into another one from another state. All they want to do is argue about who's in charge or whatever. And it is a, a righteous mess trying to do so. Uh, and it doesn't matter what group it is. Uh, and I, believe me, I used to get lists. Here, try these guys. Here, I hear some more. You know, I must have gone through, I don't know, I'd say a few thousand groups. Somebody have a website on the internet, I'd contact them. I tried everything that I could think of. I tried being nasty. I tried, uh, actually putting pictures of, uh, politicians out visiting whorehouses. You name it. I tried it. And I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't even get the politician to get mad. I mean, he wouldn't address it because he didn't have to, you know, it's just somebody, some idiot, and he probably made the picture up. Da, 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 da. Uh, so, we're bumping along, I'm bumping along, and I'm beginning to get tired of it, and, uh, um, I, quite honestly, I was ever at the point of quitting. I just, you know, well, I got my gun. Hopefully I'm still able to shoot it if they decide to back down the front door. Uh, I was giving up. And lo and behold, along comes this uh, crazy uh, person in uh, Pennsylvania who takes notes on a radio show. And this was back um, mid of last year, give or take. Um, actually, probably around May, May June area uh, that I got on that radio show. These people took notes, and all of a sudden they did it. And then all of a sudden... Uh, they uh, contact some of the people that I'm in contact with. I'm just kind of playing around, seeing what's out there. And uh, they say, hey, we got a possible project. I said, what's that? They explained it to me. I said, no, wait a minute. I put that out over a radio show just, did, just not too long ago. And, well, somebody not only took notes, but they did it. I said, you're kidding me. You mean somebody got off the couch? Yes. Wow. Okay. So After all those years, it's just incredible. Well, so over the period of time, um, from uh, <clears throat> from about uh, the, uh, the 20th of February uh, this year, since that date, we have had a free country. Now, the plan is this. The military will back, and I believe me, you've got to have the military involved. Whether you like it or not, doesn't make a difference. Now, there's a difference. You do have good guys and bad guys no matter where you go. There are more good guys than there are bad guys in the military. I have found very few that are actually really evil, even in the bad guys. Some of them ain't too cool to be around, but most of them are pretty great people. I fully support, as a veteran, I fully support our troops, period. So does everybody in this movement. I would say that people join the military to pledge their lives to defend and protect the Constitution and the people. Yeah, exactly. And they're not out there to enhance the lifestyles and comfort of the rich and famous. Or those who don't wish to be famous, but who are oligarchs who basically are living off of everyone else. Yes. That's, that's not true. what they did it for. And they and everybody if all you have to do is watch a few of these Illuminati propaganda films to realize that if you do work for these people, they will stab you in the back almost as a law of nature. So anybody who thinks that working with them is a good move, wait until what happens when you're no longer useful and see how quickly they'll torture and kill you and everyone you care about. Well, Nobody is immune from that. 
It's e- it's even uh, actually worse than that. Um, the onion that makes up what uh, we're talking about has uh, basically four levels to it. The outer level was notified at the same day that our package landed in the international court that they were no longer uh, under their protection. Over a period of a few months, there's been several thousand resignations, house arrests, there's been uh, tons of banks closed or uh, closed for a couple of days and reopened, uh, you name it. Now, this is not just bankers. This is also financiers, your exchange people. Uh, oh, yeah. Sort of thing. I and cover it on my website. There's 358 resignations documented by somebody going under the anonymous name American Kabuki. And there's a link for every single one of them in their own chronological order. And this includes on February 29th, the resignation of James Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch's son, from the executive chairman position of News International Corporation, which is Fox. Yeah, that's called, I mean, that's that's basically called a protection move. He was not. Uh, it wasn't a question of his protection as much as it was in terms of them protecting him, as much as it was his own protection because he didn't have that much to do in terms of the legal illegalities that uh, Dad pulled. Right. So he's just he actually he's not all that bad one way or the other in comparison to some of them. Uh, but to get to the deeper grain of what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly. I'm getting that you had these you had this package delivered to The Hague and that was the critical moment in which those on the inside were aware that these mass arrests that have been planned ever since the five inch document you saw in nineteen seventy nine could actually move forward by the will of the civilians in terms of common law going back to the Code of Hammurabi and 11,000-year-old documents. Exactly. Okay, great. Um, what this does, what this did was, when they received it and it got past their agents who worked at The Hague, um, what it did was they knew that it had arrived because that person uh, was made aware. There was nothing they could do about it. So consequently, their per- protection evaporated. This is like steam on a hot highway, and the sun comes out, and it poof, it's gone. <laughs> okay, well, there's there's thousands of resignations in Europe t- to date. Now, in one week, and I'm talking last week, there was 450 resignations, retirements, and this stuff, and 200 arrests. That's, that's a staggering number. That's 650 people involved in finance. Now, here's the difference. Those people under house arrest or who have been taken into custody or who retired and are staying at home are considered um, not very important one way or the other. They are primarily figureheads and not much more. Right. The difference is those who were arrested and those who are being arrested and those who are going to be arrested, that's the second layer of the onion. This is why we're not seeing a lot of newspaper and website articles about this because there's no accountability of these people getting arrested in in the outside world because they don't have a public position. Well, not only that, but the mainstream media is controlled by them. Exactly. Therefore, you're not going to hear this. Yeah, and I documented that extensively in my investigation, Financial Tyranny. It goes back to Operation Mockingbird and traceable information regarding the Masonic Order and guys who in 1826 were saying, yeah, we own the press and we own the judiciary and we own the police and we own the government and F you if you don't like it. Yeah. Basically, there's nothing you can do about it. It's And uh, people have, have alluded to the fact that there's something out there everybody's afraid of in terms of industrial, industrialists, people of power. This is basically what they were afraid of. That's Woodrow Wilson's quote in his book, The New Freedom. Yes. Very yeah. important quote. Exactly. Now, the the thing is, is that uh, um, what people didn't realize was the limitation of, you, you mentioned the G5, I'm going to say the G20. Okay. Um, and the reason I say the G20 is that uh, some of these na- some of these nations have not quite come to the light yet that they got a real serious problem or how serious it is, and they're not fully under the control or fully beholding to or involved with the G5. So they're kind of on the edge, and they can go either way. 
And the basis of this is very simple. Two, several things have happened. Number one, uh, we convinced enough people to abide by uh, documentation done the correct way, and we submitted it to the Hague in terms of a majority of states, which basically set a precedent for being free and for military civilian action. The military backs us up by way of federal marshals who contact local law enforcement, and local law enforcement actually makes the arrests. I'm sorry, this, just, just so that people understand, are federal marshals uh, members of the Army National Guard or the Air Force, or what are federal marshals? <laughs> federal marshals are federal uh, law enforcement officers, basically. Now, okay. The definition, though, is by uh, present authority, which puts them in the trick bag of having to follow the edict of what we've done in terms of the will of the people to go along with the military plan. If you wanted to meet a federal marshal, what offices would you go to? I mean, are they FBI? Are they CIA? Are they Homeland Security? They're on their own. Okay. They are. A, they're a, that's the nice thing about a federal marshal. He's relatively independent of most things. Okay? okay. There are some that say I'm in charge of them, and they're liable to get a strong argument that that only depends on the situation. Uh, in some situations, a citizen is in charge of the FBI or the CIA, depending on the situation. Right. And it varies, but. Basically, a, a federal marshal is between, he is a federal employee of the, of the current uh, power. Okay. Okay, so the not notification process, what it did was it authorizes the military to contact the federal marshals, to mm -hmm. contact the local authorities, I, to actually, do, actually take the actions of arrest. Now, okay, this might piss some people off, but I really want to clear this up. Do these marshals exist in different offices? I mean, how would you find one? Um, what, what kind of offices would they be employed by? Well, it, it, um, geez, um, uh, National uh, Security Administration uh, would probably uh, be the, the end office uh, if you wanted to really look them up in that re relationship, okay, um, I mean, because they are primary ta primarily tasked um, in such a way that a federal marshal can go across a border whenever when the border is common to the country he comes from. So you could go from, uh, say, Arizona or New Mexico into Mexico if need be, and you would have law enforcement authority there. Would okay? these marshals? Would Same these marshals thing. potentially be employed in a police station? Would they be at the police station? Uh, no, they have their own offices, uh, federal marshals' offices. Uh, there's there's a variety of them. Uh, okay. They I have a combination of different duties. I don't mean to sound like an idiot. I'm just cautious to make sure that people don't think that you invented the term federal marshal and that it's just some guy on the Internet reading <laughs> websites and, oh, yeah, I'm a marshal, and here's the little badge that I made. <laughs> yeah, I bought one of those yesterday down at the dollar store. I understand what you're saying. Um, this is real. These guys are federally employed. Well, they're, they were, they're, 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 you've heard of federal air marshals. Yeah, yeah, they're on the airplane. He is a federal marshal. He just simply is on air duty. Okay. Got That's it. all the difference is it, it is. It's, and these guys, there's a lot of these guys out there. They're very well trained. They're very knowledgeable. And they're, and they're not ordinarily professional. And they're not soldiers. No, that's the neat part about this. They're in between the civilian and the military. Right. Okay, now, you've got those three entities, the military, federal marshal, local law enforcement. What our paperwork did was to give the military civilian authority to contact the federal marshals, to contact local law enforcement, and have a big party for all these arrests. Wow. This does not include any military coup, does not include any military action, and it does not include martial law. None of that is going to happen. What is going to happen, you will see federal marshals backing up local law enforcement, taking people into custody, and there may be a stand of troops 
in case they need extra bodies to snatch somebody that decides to run or uh, they need there's a whole bunch of people in a building and they didn't know that there was 7,000 of them in there. You're going to need extra hands in order to incarcerate all these people, put them on the, on the bus and send them wherever they need to go. So this is the, the military will act in a backup fashion in some ways. <clears throat> the, Does that the, violate posse comitatus? No, because the military is not acting as a police force directly. They're directly. assisting a police action. Exactly. Okay, got it. And the police action is uh, one of control of uh, and or prevention of rioting or general civil disobedience that would call for a police situation. These are all, it, you have to look all this stuff up. A regular protest of uh, citizenry um, basically can um, be met with uh, general police force, but when they, uh, the people that called out the National Guard on several occasions during things that were a problem have found that uh, they acted illegally. And they were told, don't ever do that again. There were a lot of uh, people who were informed that this is a no-no and this is okay and don't you cross that line. Sure. Okay. So you've got these three three entities. Now, back to the plan. The plan stipulates several things. One, you're not going to have police state. You're not going to have the military in control. It's not martial law. And they're not going to come in the house and snatch you up. That ain't happening. What's happening is this. The intent and purpose of this plan was to minimize the chaos involved in the action. Now, when you arrest several thousand people in a city, it's going to create a little bit of a hubbub. People are going to see the military. They're going to see uh, a lot of policemen doing the job. And this will be on video. I mean, you're going to have CNN and all the local news people. Or everybody's going to have uh, some kind of video of this stuff. And I assume these policemen will probably be in riot gear, which will have black uniforms and scary-looking stuff. Maybe. It depends on whether or not they expect problems with who they're dealing with. Generally, no, because it's not a riot situation. Okay. It could turn that way. They'll bring the gear. I mean, it'll be in the trunk most likely. Most of your people that uh, are, have been responsible for the problems are office-type people. They're not necessarily physically active or capable. Uh, and to go along with that, um, you know, they're going to they're not going to torture him or, you know, oh, he fell down 14 flights of stairs or any of that. Well, and I've heard from my own insider that there are an astonishing number of very deeply embedded moles who are much closer to these people than they ever thought anybody would get and and actually not have been outed. Exactly. Now, there's a there's a couple of things in this. First of all, they just of the plan is to not create chaos. In other words, you're going to have public announcements. People such as yourself and myself will be uh, notified approximately a day ahead of schedule. Mm. In terms of putting this on the internet so it can go viral. Okay. Uh, I would imagine doing this interview, this is going to get kind of viral. -y. Well, very much so. Some of my videos have millions of views, and uh, this will be distributed throughout hundreds, if not thousands, of different blogs and reposted. And if we let people know that there's going to be a one-day window of notification, you can absolutely guarantee that there will be a massive tidal wave of uh, publicity once this moment arrives. Well, that moment arrives when, I, when we are given the green light to notify our people, the ones that we have contact with. At that point, then, it is to go viral on the Internet, and we're to try to uh, access as much mainstream media, be that uh, AM radio or whatever, doesn't matter, but it's m as much as we can. Now, I would imagine that the oligarchs, who are the bad guys, are going to be hearing this and saying to people and getting them to listen to this, getting their soldiers and their mercenaries to listen to this and say, you got to get these SOBs because they're trying to overthrow the government. No. What we are doing in terms of the action that's going to be taken, and I'm not talking about us or our actions. Our actions are only a part of the plan. The plan, basically, is to arrest these people. 
no destruction, no firefights, no gunplay, uh, or any kind of violence if possible. The idea of this is no chaos, no violence, and a legal, legal way to do it, a lawful manner in which to conduct the operation. This has been coming since George Washington made federal districts out of our uh, innocent uh, 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 group of 13 uh, colonies. So <laughs> um, what you have to look at is that the plan also offers protections of keeping the lights on, making the internet, making sure the internet works, and that the phone does, and you can flush the toilet. You can go to work and not have to worry about it. Right. We've heard from other insiders, in fact, it was from the one you met on the phone with me, that uh, these people since the 80s, and I mean the, the conspirators now, the bad guys, they have elaborate plans to blow up a whole bunch of bridges and wipe out power and wipe out sewage and wipe out water in the event that anything like this were to happen to them. And I also know, however, that there are so many moles and so many people who will not stand by and let this happen that if they think they're going to be able to do this, they're sorely mistaken. But they may try, and there may be certain levels of disruption that will need to be prevented, as you're saying. Well, there's um, basically going on right now tactical positioning. And I mean right this minute. The tactical positioning is being done in such a manner that nobody's going to be the wiser. Right. These are regular people they see every day. They have no idea that that person happens to be an agent for the good guys, as you say, moles, or however you want to look at that. Right. Okay. The uh, irrespective as to what the uh, fear mongers will tell you, the uh, bad guys have lost enough funds and lost, lost enough support, and there are enough people that are upset with them that... Uh, their powers have been curtailed tremendously. Well, look, Drake, they wouldn't have done those bailouts if they could have possibly avoided it. That was an astonishing move <laughs> that really showed that they are just absolutely grasping at straws, and it's like it's like Wiley e. Coyote when he's paddling in the air, and he, he doesn't realize he's falling yet. <laughs> exactly. Um, to give you an example of how desperate they are, uh, they just passed, a, they just had a couple of uh, executive orders from their uh, main lackey in the White House uh, saying that they got rights to everything. I'm well aware of that, and it's utterly astonishing. The only thing I can think of is these guys are so desperate and they're so lacking in common sense that they think that even at this late stage in the game that they can be in this poker bluff and actually get people to think that they could have the boots on the ground to enforce these ridiculous, ridiculous executive orders. Well, then you've got the NDAA, uh, which didn't help. Now, basically, as you're saying, the idea is to foster fear within the, within the uh, uh, freedom movement and primarily within the citizenry. Well, it's working very well. Well... Um, I'm glad to see people stand up and start taking these things to task, at least. Yeah. Um, that shows that there, there are some people out there that uh, do have some guts. Um, primarily, though, you have to remember that uh, these are last gasp efforts. The only thing they've got left is, uh, at this point, mostly control of the press, and they're losing their grips on that, uh, as well as this sort of shake the bush to see the see if the rabbit comes out. Well, and as I was saying, you have to have people to hold the guns. Well, I uh, addressed, uh, you can, uh, anybody who wants to uh, listen to it, I addressed the troops. Um, that's active duty, reserve, retired, uh, and disabled. Uh, that is, again, on the website, freedomreigns.us. And um, the... Uh, Basic thing that is that I have heard from active duty troops is that they have two things that concern them. The first one is is that they disobey orders. It doesn't matter what, whether it's lawful or not that they're going to be kicked out of the military. Well, there ain't any jobs out there, and if these guys ain't got skills, they're screwed, and they realize this. So they're a little bit fearful of that. The other part 
is that if somebody decides to declare martial law, 80 some, 90 percent of them, give or take, are going to go AWOL. And they're taking their equipment with them and going home. Now, 90 percent. Well, somewhere between 80 and 90 percent are saying, no, that ain't happening. We're not going to go after somebody's grandma with a, a combat weapon. That's stupid. Okay, that's ridiculous. Well, what you have to remember is that there's a difference between lawful and unlawful uh, orders or directives. The unlawful order or directive will tell you to go against what you know to be the truth according to the Constitution. Uh, Posse Comitatus says that you are not a police force, therefore you're not to go in and extract people from houses. That ain't cool, and, it, and it's not to happen. You will receive count orders possibly that tell you, no, forget that and arrest that officer, that's liable to happen if somebody ordered it. So you know, the lawful order is going to be something that is going to be an operation that can be carried out lawfully. Now, what if, what if some of these guys, some of the things I've heard are that they're basically saying now that, oh, well, the U.S. government is under the jurisdiction of the United Nations or NATO, and what if they tried to make the soldier... Uh, have a NATO badge that he's operating under. Okay. Is that a lawful order? Well, okay. Um, <laughs> that gets into the uh, issue of being in uniform. You are not allowed to carry out your service duties when you're out of uniform. You take your shirt off uh, and, and leave it off and go to formation in your T-shirt, and you'll find out how that feels. The uh, basis of this goes to the fact that you are in the United States military, and I don't care which branch it is, doesn't matter. You have to have, to be in uniform, the stars and bars above any other service emblem to include your insignia patch, and that includes the United Nations and NATO. Now. The problem is, is that we made agreements in 1933, 1945, uh, dealing primarily started with the North American Treaty Organization known as NATO, uh, also dealing with the United Nations, where uh, basically the uh, group known as the United Nations and or NATO or an authorized group of uh, nations that are our allies can request or require our presence militarily, and we are required to comply. Okay. The reason for this is that our representatives could rescind this and don't have the guts to do so. Basically that and that alone. When they do so, then you come out from under it. Now, there's some other things in this process people are not aware of. And that is that our documents supersede anything past the uh, date of the 13th Amendment. And, it does, and what it does is, at the point of action, all of the executive orders and all the horse hockey and other garbage that has been perpetrated upon the people illegally after the point of the 13th Amendment, that's 1812. Remember that date and think about what's gone on since then. Anything that disagrees with the Constitution, first of all, is null and void of any legal or lawful impact. Further, anything that disagrees with the Constitution, basically, is to be stricken if it is a law, rule, or regulation. So, when well, How the well did I was just following orders hold up at the Nuremberg trials? It didn't. Everybody that did that got convicted. This is not considered a plausible defense, simply because you know the difference between torturing somebody and not. Uh, the field manual states that you're not to engage civilians. That means you're not supposed to step on them, et cetera. Uh, <laughs> all of this has been covered. Now, I'm going to give you an example from Vietnam called the My Lai Massacre. Okay, there was not too much done with that, but uh, the uh, <laughs> the problem was that uh, several people came up with that exact defense, and the court martial said, "No, that ain't that don't fly." Period. Now they lucked out, and I'm gonna mean I mean this literally. They lucked out because a court martial that deals with the taking of civilian life also carries the death penalty. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So they were lucky they didn't get executed, and I mean all of them because everybody that was involved is up for the death penalty under those conditions, and it's not up to me. That's military code, 
and I agree with that um, primarily. Um, <laughs> torturing people and that sort of thing is not necessary. You're not going to get good information anyway. Now, if you make somebody think that you might torture them, and you talk to them and say, well, do you really want me to do that? And they'll say, no. And you say, well, then tell me what you know. Okay. And off you go down the road, and they'll, they'll tell you, okay, you wait a little while. You treat them correctly. Uh, you know, give them a little something, a little water to drink, uh, maybe a little food to eat. You come back and ask them a second time, look, they're, 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 that was all BS. We're not going to do anything to you. Can you talk to me about what's going on? Yeah, man, you know, and then you get the real information. But the, but torturing somebody, you tell them anything, make it quit. Right. You'll make Therefore, up whatever is going to stop it. It's about as accurate as somebody's imagination. Just that simple. So if, if a soldier in the United States military has a commanding officer with bulging earthworm on his forehead, screaming both sets of teeth, top and bottom of the iris, screaming in his face, you have to obey this order, uh, and he does so, he's liable for federal court-martial. Exactly. So it might be easier, you think, to say yes when somebody's screaming in your face, <laughs> but you're also describing a majority of the United States military that already supports these mass arrests, and so if you were on the losing side... You're in a minority, and if this mass arrest works, which it very much looks like it will, then you're going to be held accountable. Exactly. Uh, you may have a few opposing forces, but there shouldn't be many. Um, the situation is simple. Um, I know of an incident in Vietnam where um, a unit was told to wipe out a friendly village and it was called back then in the day a search and destroy mission search and destroy means that you go through a village at several levels uh we were told we were told to go through at level one the level one search and destroy means you kill everything that lives and you burn uh mangle torture uh whatever kind of physical structures you find to include statues or anything you leave a burnt spot, basically, with dead bodies laying around. Well, the problem was that I was involved in this, and I knew some of those people, and so did a lot of the other uh, troops. And we told the captain, no. And he said, yes, you will. And that's when we pointed our guns at him. Some of the guys, there was a few, who decided, well, yeah, I guess, you know, I'm killing good, because that's what we're here for, so let's go. And we pointed our guns at them and said, no, you ain't. Wow. About a few minutes, and it only, it only took a few minutes, and you're going to really shoot me? The captain's asking these guys, well, uh, are we going to go down here and shoot people that are friendly? And he said, well, I'm not sure. Hold on a minute. A couple of minutes later, the orders changed. <laughs> and the incident was never reported. Wow. And you were there. You witnessed this. Yes. The This happened a lot uh, in a lot of cases simply because... It ain't cool to do this. Once you get to know somebody uh, and you find out that they're real people, irrespective as to the differences. Now, you're talking a third world country where it's dirt floors and that's about it, basically. Thatched hutches, uh, thatched houses or whatever you want to call them. We call them hooch. Um, it's basically a one room, maybe a, maybe a room and a half. Uh, and these people um, make their living by uh, waiting in... Uh, uh, leech infested, uh, uh, rice paddy water, uh, planting and harvesting rice. Uh, they use their water buffaloes a little bit in some cases for, uh, some of the heavier work. Um, and they harvest the rice in order, in order to, uh, have something to eat. Now, a rice diet is not the greatest thing in the world, but there's also a lot of streams around, so you end up with a combination of fish and rice primarily as the base diet. You can add to that some leaves of some plants that are good to eat. Uh, sometimes you can get bananas. It varies a little bit. But uh, an extraordinarily, and I mean extremely poor place, uh, when you get to know these people, I mean, they're working 20 hours a day if they can, daylight to dark. Uh, every chance they get, they're doing something. Uh, and this includes little kids. They're actually given tasks to do. Um, when you see somebody working like that just simply to survive, and you got a can, you got an extra can of beans, you make sure that they got it. 
Right. That's just how it is. You you actually look at that and go, man, you know, that little kid's hungry. And you open a can of beans and you make sure that you, sometimes you stop and you sit down and you have, you make sure that they eat it. Uh, <laughs> sure, you can use the can for, for a landmine later. Yeah, well, collect the can, take it with you. Um, but, uh, you see people that are, that are, you know, uh, little kids that are bony. I mean, their bones are sticking out because they hadn't had enough to eat. And the reason is that they got fish heads and rice to eat. Maybe. Uh, that message with you. You remember these things. So, uh, you don't, I don't see it as a right. Uh, here we are. We're extraordinarily wealthy. We got the best weapons in the world. Uh, we're going to take automatic, uh, weapons, M16s, uh, and grenades and go through it and kill everybody. Well, you give me a good reason and I'll consider that. If somebody's shooting at me, that's different. These people not only didn't have any weapons, but they would actually come in the, in the night, and they would come up to our position, certain positions, and say, hey, man, yeah, who is it? And they'd tell you their name. And you'd say, okay, uh, and you'd ask them a question. They'd answer the question correctly. You knew you were talking to the right person. They didn't answer the question correctly. You pulled the trigger. Right. But they would tell, you know, hey, you got a bunch of them coming up, coming at you from the other side over that way in that little gullet. And nine times out of ten, it was correct. And this one little village, and there was, there was these villages were all over, friendly villages. Uh, and we made sure they had plenty to eat. We made sure any kind of needs they had were taken care of. We give them medical care, you name it. I mean, this was an asset to us because uh, unless you've been in the jungle or <laughs> – and another example would be in the sand. Unless you've been in a condition of that nature, you got no clue. So this was my reason for wanting to abscond with a politician, bring him over and run him, run him through a couple of ice paths, eat patties, get him a couple of good sets of leeches going on his butt, and put him back. <laughs> Give him some kind of first-hand taste. And these uh, people you're describing are the ones that you were given the Category 1 Seek and Destroy orders against. Yes, and we told them no. Most of the people in the in our in our unit knew uh, for a fact that these were friendlies. We had dealt with them. Uh, they they invite us in and, and would feed us when they didn't have any food hardly. I mean, what was the reasoning? Did you guys try to understand why they would want this done? I mean, what could we're, possibly? Uh, never did find out the reason for the order. The orders right. were arbitrary in a lot of cases. Right. There's a book about Vietnam called The Bright and Shining Lie. And I suggest everybody get a hold of a copy of it, uh, and it will give you a good idea as to what kind of a mess that was. Now, what we're dealing with here is something a little different. Uh, a lot of people say, ooh, insurrectionist. No, because you're not trying to infiltrate a government and uh, take it over. You're not an invader. You're not trying to bring a bunch of people in, um, unlike certain... Uh, People in certain agencies that like to uh, play games with guns across the border uh, down south, unlike those people, you're not trying to do any of that. It's not illegal because it's a notification process only. But it does give the military the authority in terms of civilian authority under the Constitution to take action according to the betterment of our way of life. This restores the American dream of... Uh, uh, mom and apple pie, being able to be peaceful, and I have to worry about a whole lot of things. Well, I would assume that the majority of retired personnel from the military, active personnel from the military, special forces, black operations guys, uh, that most of the people who are hearing this are going to realize that if something like this starts to happen, they want to be involved. But right now, they're feeling like They've been given the mushroom treatment. <laughs> They're sitting in the dark being fed a lot of BS. And let's assume that most of these people want to get involved. They want to know what to do once the time comes. What do you tell them? Look at it in terms of following the constitutional premise of lawful order. A lawful order will not put you into a police situation. It does not call for roadblocks. It does not call for martial law. It does not in any way interfere directly with the civilian population and its operation. What a lawful order does is it allows you to stay out of those areas in such a fashion that you can carry out whatever duty it is 
and it could be any kind of a thing. It could be playing war games or whatever, maneuvers. You might go down and uh, assist somebody with logs. Uh, you, you never know. It could be strictly a preparedness or ready training thing. Well, we got to get these guys ready, see how quick they can get their gear, put them in the truck, take them over here, and can you hump up over that hill? How long does that take? These kinds of things are lawful orders. Uh, if there were to be an invasion, and I understand that, understand that that's been uh, offered and turned down, um, the uh, difference between that is you're going to have people trying to come across the border uh, for the strict purpose of taking you out. That's different. The other part of this was I was requested to contact as many of the underground as I could, to include militias, to include freedom groups, to include uh, the people by themselves that just happen to have a gun or, or kind of like me, too much hillbilly, too red over the neck, and I got too many guns to live in the woods. <laughs> um, the uh, premise for my contacting those people was to tell them to get ready because there is this is coming. It's not going to be stopped. And uh, it's coming a lot sooner than people think. And the other part of it is don't under any circumstances, engage our military. That's not what this is about. You find out from them, you know, what's up? Oh, we're just going down here. Okay. Uh, sometimes some of these people will be contacted for it to assist them. In other words, this is going to be an all-out effort in this country, and it's going to take a lot of people. There are a considerable number who need to be removed from office or their responsibilities and contained, retained, and arrested. Now, my understanding is they're planning to populate the FEMA camps with all these dinks, and I feel that's appropriate. They build them for us. Now they go, you go take a camping trip in them. <laughs> Karma is a bitch. Yeah. So I'm looking at that. Okay. Um, afterwards, the, doing this is not, to me, as um, extraordinarily anxiety as a lot of people would think I'm not as concerned with this part of it as I am what comes after. Uh, there's going to be some interruption. In other words, you need to get some extra toilet paper and a few extra can canned goods. And I'm talking about have enough for, say, a month or two. And that should basically cover the, the lapse in time. Not all the trucks are going to be running. So the grocery that gets cleaned out when everybody thinks that the, the world's gone mad or like they do during a hurricane. Um, right. Then, you know, if it doesn't get resupplied, what are you going to do? Well, this is why we got extra food. This is why a lot of people up here do. This is why people up here raise their own gardens. Um, simply, you can stuff and you put it up. And having that extra not only is less expensive than going to the grocery, but just in case something does screw up real bad, and it's coming, um, for the, say, 10 days, I don't know how many people consider the importance of this, but to me, being civilized does equate uh, to the use of certain hygienic uh, items, and one of those that I know of that to me is extraordinarily important is simple, plain old toilet paper. It might behoove people to think about not being able to go down to the grocery when you run out and get some more. And I'm going to tell you, newspaper doesn't make it. It's hard on certain things that you don't want to rough up. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, you know, very simply, I mean, you know, you have to think in terms of what do you use, okay, and what do you use commonly, and what are the convenience items that might not be part of a shipment that does make it through, okay, or does get to you, uh, that's not, it's not considered a survival level item. Well, toilet paper, uh, uh, simple tissues for your nose, uh, sanitary napkins for ladies. Uh, well, and, and oh. people can subsist on simple rice and beans. You know, all these elaborate products that a lot of these freedom sites are selling are not really necessary. I mean, it might make it more comfortable, but if somebody's really at poverty level, you can get by with just buying some kidney beans and some brown rice and just keep that in your pantry. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't take a lot. Um, the idea is this, okay? Um, yeah, lay up some extra toilet paper. If you're lucky, find it on sale, go at it that way. 
uh, if you find uh, something that you know really tastes extraordinarily good, but it's a dollar forty nine, and they got the other ones for two for a dollar, take the two for a dollar. It's not that much different, and you you can make out just fine on it. Add a little bit of spices to it, and you're good. Uh, but anyway, the survival part I don't think is going to be all that all that critical, and I'll tell you why. The plan itself reiterates many times the portion that I read that this is to be a non-interruptive, non-chaotic, peaceful meaning non-shooting type of an action. And that is an extraordinary difference between all these people out here saying, oh, boy, rosin up your gun, get your bullets out, you know, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, they're coming. Well, yeah, they're going down the road because they need to go over and secure the power plant that the bad guys would like to blow up. And I would also encourage people, because I know, as I said, there are many people out there who are playing a game, and the game is that everything they hear must not be true. So they're going to say every single thing this guy Drake is saying is not true, and this is all a pretext for martial law and, and for New World Order. So I would say to them, and you can address them as well, but I want to say something first, and that is let's realistically consider that if arrests start to be made and that evidence is provided, that is progress no matter what, even if it is ultimately, and that might be as far as they could think of it in their own mind, one negative faction against another negative faction. The fact is, let's be honest, how many bankers went to jail during the bailouts? How many people have ever been held accountable for anything? If we start seeing real accountability, by God, that's progress, and I don't care what you think, you've got to be able to see that it's a step forward no matter what. If you start seeing mass arrests, Something has changed, and it breaks out of that thing that goes back to the Masons, which is everybody who's in on it gets a free pass. Exactly. Um, my suggestion is to, yes, be ready, but also relax. Uh, be calm, go and collect it, and, and slow to pull the trigger. Uh, Unless somebody acts unfriendly towards you, uh, I wouldn't uh, necessarily take anything, any aggressive action toward them. Wait and see. Uh, sure. Yeah, you can let them get, walk right up to you. It doesn't matter. As I said, this plan calls for uh, a combination of the things that our, our original documents call for. And the basis of this is to uh, officially remove those people who tax you to death for no good reason other than to put it in their pocket. Uh, this is to remove the private central banking system. This is to remove a whole load of regulations and regulatory agencies that don't serve any purpose other than control. In other words, this is the freedom. Now, with that freedom comes the responsibility of being what you're supposed to be to everybody that you come across. This is contained in the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Say hi to somebody. Wouldn't you like somebody to say hi and wave at you? If it, it feels good. Okay. Well, let me also point out that in my book, The Source Field Investigations, I quote from the American Federation of Scientists, which says that there's been over 5,000 patents that were classified for national security, and this includes automatically any patent that gets above 70% efficiency at converting energy is automatically classified. So what that means is anybody who invents anything that could challenge oil, you will never see it. Well, and all that stuff needs to be released. And I know that that's part of what you all are planning on doing here. Well, that's part of the plan, but some of that is already coming out, too. Right. And the reason for that is that the uh, the bad guys, I'll say, have lost a considerable amount of a combination of, of things. One of those is their power base. They're, they can't say, well, I'm the mucky muck, do so, and have it done. The other part is they don't have the cash on hand, the finances, uh, to pay the bad guys that work for them. Yeah, mercenaries don't work if you don't pay pay their salary. Exactly. So you get a situation where they have lost most of their power. They're beginning to lose most of the finance. And I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you, to wake up tomorrow morning and find out that the nation had been clamped down 
Now that clampdown is complete. The satellite systems will not work. You will not be allowed to make international calls. There's no going to be no traffic in or out of the United States, period. Now um, hang on, Drake, because you said that it would be a court-martialing offense and unlawful orders if any soldiers would block roads. And now you're saying that air traffic is going to be blocked. How does how do those two things line up? Hold on and listen. Okay. <laughs> this is a neat one. The closure, okay, of our national borders does come under the military auspices of control. They are allowed to do so in the event of extraordinary circumstances. This extraordinary circumstance deals with the freedom of our country. And the crooks who would take every last dime in this country with them when they decided to run for the hills. Well, yeah, and the average person has now heard about Muppet Gate, where this guy Greg Smith, who was an executive chairman at uh, Goldman Sachs, comes forward and says that he saw internal memos and that the prevailing climate there was toxic and destructive, and that the only thing they cared about was sucking as much money out of their clients as they could, and they called them Muppets, which is a British term that means a stupid, ignorant person. Well, if you want to get down to the crux of it, uh, I rather imagine most people remember the uh, great fall of the stock market back uh, 07, 08. Yeah, sure. Okay. One of the reasons it went as deep as it did, and we were lucky, one of the reasons it went as deep as it did was that trillions of dollars were uh, automatically sent electronically out of the country. This was noticed because there are uh, people that uh, watch this thing called stock watch, uh, money um, followers, um, things of that nature. And it automatically uh, set off an alarm, which a guy noticed, and their communications got cut. Mm. Or it would have been a 1933 all over again. They did save us that much. You're now, saying trillions with a T were flying out of the country. Yes, and uh, this happened within a matter of um, about seven minutes. Jesus. Okay, now, the reason that the satellites are going to be turned off is for to protect us from that. I yep. see. The reason for no international travel is to keep the bankers from loading up a, a Learjet and taking off. If they do so, they will be shot down. This is going to be a complete total clampdown for a period of 72 hours, if need be. Now, it should take about 24 hours for the sweep necessary, mass arrest and all this stuff. Uh, secondary sweep will probably take another five or six to make sure they got all the records necessary to convict these people. The other part of this is that there are uh, certain areas that are sensitive that uh, may contain explosive charges of varying kinds in order to blow up a record. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, you know, the, uh, you've seen a lot of these in movies lately where they blow things up and there's big balls of fire. Well, Absolutely. that sort of explosive takes out records like you wouldn't believe. Okay, so in order to protect against that, this is the reason, okay, uh, for the closure. Now, this is a limited operation. At the time that they know that it is cleared, that the uh, military portion of the action is has been culminated. Then, and I say military, the military backs the federal marshals who use the local police, etc. Okay. Um, after that action is taken, we are going to have about a day's time to make sure that this goes viral on the internet. Hey, guess what? Look at this. And uh, there will be some video supplied, as I understand it. I didn't know about this until just the other day. Well, I may be talking out of school here, but I think you're underestimating it when you say the word some. Uh, I'm under the, I have been informed that there are DVDs upon DVDs worth of productions, some of which involve some very famous names that people will immediately recognize narrating these productions. And these productions will be apparently airing on television, nothing else, for five days running and it's going to be wall-to-wall, -wall, and they're going to just be educating people about everything they need to know. That's well, what I heard. There's a, there's another aspect to this. Okay. They're going to have a what's called a specific education channel. 
that channel is going to run uh, specifics as to the origins of these guys, the manner in which they accomplished what they did, and how the bad guys got in charge, basically. Uh, wow. The DVDs you're talking about are similar, but this is a direct education thing, I understand. It could be now, and it's not going to be limited to five days. This is going to run for several months because what it's going to do is out this uh, in terms of the bad guys and their structure, how they took over and how to prevent it. After that, then, you get into what's called uh, county projects, which lead to state projects, which leads to national projects. You're going to have enough people vacated from office that there's going to be an extraordinary immediate need for people who can step up temporarily, and I'm going to make this clear, temporarily to fill offices so that we can keep the function of the structure we have, basically. That way you don't have a train train wreck, so to speak, in terms of the economy. You don't have everything going in the toilet all at once or services interrupted, etc. So you're going to have some people appointed temporarily, and it will be specifically stated temporarily. Now, the, as I understand it, at the end of the 72-hour period, if it takes that long, it may not take that long, at the end of the period of time necessary, 72 hours or less, the public announcement will be made from the press room at the White House. That's according to the plan. The plan has become fluid a little bit because there's been some different uh, things go on that uh, weren't even available in terms of materials, in terms of the types of things that are available now back when the plan was originally written or basically completed. So uh, it is uh, basically uh, something that uh, is totally awesome to be a part of uh, something that uh, deals with the rebirth of a, of a country. I feel like I ought to have a musket and some kind of funny-looking hat, you know, and be running around the woods, woods hollering, yahoo. I'm, I'm thrilled by this, and the whole reason why I wanted to conduct this interview was specifically to talk to you as you have all of a sudden popped out publicly and backed up something that I was almost the only person talking about. But I do want to make it clear that despite the fact that there's all this hate about me on the Internet and I am primarily a guy who writes about UFOs, uh, the reason why I was trusted with this information is very simple. I'm not anonymous. It's my real name. I'm out there. I'm brave enough to talk about this stuff and risk whatever could come my way. And all it takes is for people to step up and do that. I happen to do that. So I'm sorry if people wanted somebody else, but this is what you got. I'm the one that they told, and now you've come forward, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I also want to just kick in here one very important point, and that is that if you go back to the origin of the Illuminati, which was revealed when documents from the original group founded by Adam Weishaupt in Bavaria were seized after an Illuminati henchman was struck by lightning on his horse, and then the Bavarian government officials found these Illuminati charter documents in his breast pocket of his blazer. It was from that point onward in the series of other arrests that have happened since then that they found that one of the key areas that these people want to control and completely dominate is science. And so in my book, Source Field Investigations, uh, I have presented information regarding the truth of science and the truth that has been suppressed. It's very important to understand that human health does not require the products of the pharmaceutical companies. There is an aspect of human health that is related to consciousness. There is an aspect of human health that is related to good diet. And there are aspects of human health that are strictly energetic, and I'm talking about cures that require nothing but energy. And that energy, believe it or not, can be harnessed by building a pyramid. And it appears that the ancients who did this were much more knowledgeable than we gave them credit for. <laughs> and so my point in bringing this up is that the scientific suppression is vast, and it includes a variety of information about the idea that our DNA, its primary function is to store photons, there's about a 1,000 photons per DNA molecule, 
And when you have an area of your body that's sick, it loses those photons, and your DNA doesn't have those photons in them anymore. That's how you can measure where sickness is. A guy by the name of Dr. Fritz Albert Pipe studied cancer and found that the only commonality between carcinogens is that they scramble light that comes in at 380 nanometer wavelengths, which is ultraviolet. What does that mean? That means ultimately that since cancer is cells running out of control in your body, the ultraviolet light that's stored by your DNA, which would break out when he broke open a DNA molecule, by the way, that light is being stored to send control messages to the cell that tells it to stop reproducing. Now, this is one of a vast variety of things that all leads to, into my main point, which is that it appears that we are going through some sort of evolutionary stimulus to the energetic portion of our DNA. And this is not a random speculation. This is actually based, for example, on the work of Dr. John Hawkes, an anthropologist from University of Wisconsin, who has studied the last 5,000 years of mummies and uh, grave sites that he could dig up and analyze the DNA, and he's concluded that our DNA has changed structurally by a whopping 7% in the last 5,000 years. That means that human evolution has already rapidly sped up on a genetic measurable level. You can trace it in the DNA, and in the last 100 years, there's also something called the Flynn effect, which is that IQ scores have had to be readjusted every decade because people keep getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And so all of this leads back to ancient knowledge about the times that we're now in, which was inherited by these Illuminati New World Order people. And I make a very compelling case that they are well aware of these ancient cycles. They know that the cycles end in 2012. They believed that this would result in some sort of catastrophic uh, earth change, which is a misunderstanding. I want to make that point very clear if I bring this up at all. That is that the origins of these ancient prophecies can be traced back to two ancient civilizations, one of which was in Antarctica, which we call Atlantis, the other of which was in what's now Siberia. The Earth's position did shift at that time, but according to a variety of credible threads of evidence that I've tied together, it was actually the result of nuclear weapons being used. People don't realize that the Earth was, was home to very advanced civilizations that lost their technology because 90-95% of beachfront property, which is where everybody wanted to live, was inundated. But these people had very advanced knowledge, and that knowledge was passed down from the Siberian strain to Iran in the form of Zoroastrianism, to India in the form of Hinduism, and on into Europe. So you've got to go back to Zoroastrian and Hindu prophecy. What did they say about what was going to happen in the times that we're now in? Because everything else, and this includes Hebrew prophecy, Christian prophecy, Islamic prophecy, you name it, they all trace back to these original seed teachings. When you read the original seed teachings, the Zoroastrians say that we're going to go into a period they call Friday.